friends, Jerry Rosa here at the Rosa String Works Workshop. I'm still plowing through in the midst of that coronavirus thing. It ain't affected me at all. <laughs> but that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about a guitar. And it's a guitar that needs some TLC. It's a D35 Martin sunburst finish. Matte finish also. There's the neck on it. The serial number Melissa has written on the card here is uh, 375665 and she looked that up and says it's about a 1976 approximately. It has a number of issues. Overall it's not too bad. There's a bit of underbow in the neck that I don't like and I'm calling it underbow rather than relief because it's way more than relief. When you can see it this clearly it's got more than it needs and I don't call that relief. I call it underbow. It's like this. So I don't like that. The problem with me not liking it is there's really no way to fix it without major surgery because it does not have an adjustable truss rod. So it's got the hard rod inside there, I'm assuming. Uh, but we might even still be able to live with that and I might be able to file the frets on both ends and level it out enough to where it's back to relief. I think I could. It's it's got a significant amount, but I don't think it's insurmountable. It's got other issues. This pit guard issue here, see how it's curled up? You could throw a dog under there. Now, this is controversial, but when you know you're right, you just stand up and you say what you think. I know I'm right, I'm gonna stand up and say what I think. This is from liquid polishes, or at least chemicals. Now, it, you know, I say liquid polishes, what I really mean is chemicals. You put these different chemicals on your pick guard and most of those are liquid polishes or maybe something like Pledge or something like that. You know, and I don't mean to knock Pledge, I'm just using that as a name that almost everybody knows, a spray on wax type finish or whatever you want to call it to clean something. Anyway, when you put chemicals on these plastics, they over time will curl up. How do I know that? Ask me how I know that because I've done it and I know that's what caused it. I know that's what caused it. One case, I early in my career, I had a very nice Martin guitar in the shop. About a month later, the guy calls me back and he says, did you put anything on this guitar? And I said, well, I don't know what you mean. What do you mean? And he says, well, you know, to polish it or wax it. And I said, yeah, I use some of those spray-on liquid polishes that they sell for guitars. He goes, well, the pick guard's all curled up now. He said, and it wasn't before. I mean, it wasn't. And it was, it was a month or two later when he called me. I don't remember. It was early in my career. You know, I've been doing this for nearly 40 years. So anyway, my point is that was a black and white case where what I put on there caused it to curl up. I've seen it in every case and every case like this where I've talked to the customer, they admit to using the liquid polishes on their guitars or some other spray on type thing or whatever. Do not put chemicals on your pick guards. You do what you want, you've been warned, okay? I'm telling you, black and white, it's not a good thing. What I do is I use paste waxes like that Renaissance wax and I am try very hard to not get it on the plastic. Now, you can't hardly not get it on your bindings and things like that, but generally your bindings have a finish sprayed over them and so it's not as big a deal on your bindings as your pick guard. Your pick guard has no finish on it and it's just raw plastic and when those chemicals get to it, they do things to it. Believe what you want. That's what I believe. Enough said on that. Now, what else is it in here for? It's not in here just for those two things that I pointed out, the neck and this. The bridge is tight, and one of the best ways to test your bridge is to take a thin piece of paper and go, while it's under tension, go right around the back of the bridge and see if you can get the corner of your paper to go under there. And as you can see, this does not go under there at all. It uh, is tight as it can be. Or as us country folks say, it's as tight as a bull's butt at fly time. There you go. Now, this is the other problem. It has a nice little step up right here. If you were micro size and you were walking this way, you would trip over this. If you were micro size and you were walking this way, you would trip over this. It is proud of the surface. Those cracks there, this piece is sticking up higher than either side. Can you see the cracks? I think you can now. 
There you go, that's a better look at it. So that's one of the things he wants fixed, for sure. And then to a lesser degree, the finish itself, you can see the square right here where it's polished out. That square is a pad that's inside the guitar that's been on the lid and has been laying there and has buffed out the rest of the guitar. Yes, I know I could take a fine steel wool and dull this back down, but you know, there's a lot of places where it's, it's buffed out. And I think that we'd be ahead on this guitar to just buff out the finish. I talked to the customer and he agreed. He thinks that's the better way to go. So we're going to go ahead and just buff the finish out to a, you know, a kind of a medium polished look. We're going to have to replace this pick guard though. So I have to get one of those on order if I don't have one in stock. And I don't think I do. And the bigger challenge though is fixing this. And this is not going to be easy to fix because it doesn't seem to want to go down in there. Maybe if I get the tension off the guitar, maybe it'll relax enough that I can push this back down in there. That could be a real problem. We've tuned it up so you can just hear what it sounds like now. So the sound on it's really nice. I don't know that we're going to be able to do a whole lot to improve that, though we might give it a shot. You just never know. I think we can even make it a little bit better. I'm going to point out a couple of minor things, and these are minor, okay? In this case, a little tip that you can do to avoid having a little problem. Now what is the problem? If you look at the... Let me set the guitar down here where it's on the carpet. If you look at the tuner right here, you see how the string is wrapped around there so many times? Well, at some point when you wrap it around that many times, now you're wrapping string around string instead of around the post. I told you it's a minor problem. It's not a big issue. But the minor problem is that now that tuner turns at a different gear ratio because that post, it's so much bigger around now. So now instead of just getting a little minor adjustment when you turn a little minor amount, now you're getting a bigger adjustment. It can throw you off if you're used to, like me, I do it all the time, so I'm very sensitive to that. And as soon as I grab that one and I start to turn it, it just jerks the, the note way past where it should be. So I'm just pointing it out as just a little hint that that's a little problem you could run into. It's a minor thing, but yet it is, it is an issue. So try to just get the right amount of wrap around your posts so that you don't have that build up and change your gear ratio. Well, after about two hours of interruptions, I'm back on the guitar. It just never stops around here. The well wasn't working, so my wife couldn't water her horses. You have never seen a problem like this in your life on electrical. I don't even want to go into it because you would never believe me, but two different breakers would turn one light off. That's kind of the root of it. Still don't know exactly what was causing that, but I just pulled all the breakers out except for the essential breakers that we need at the moment, and uh, I'll have to figure it out later. Oh my goodness. Let's get started on this guitar. So the first thing that I want to figure out on this guitar, now that I have the strings off of it, is what's going on on this break. Maybe just slightly cracked right here at the binding as well. So I would say it got banged really hard right there is what I would guess. And then that just split it right up the middle here is, that's a guess, I, I don't know for sure, but that's what I would say happened. Like I said, this part is proud. It doesn't move much, although you can, Definitely tell it's cracked there. It's not a surface crack. So I'm going to see if I can go in here with my hands, reaching my right arm up in here, and I can definitely feel both cracks, this one and this one, uh, from the inside. Now what I'm gonna try to do is very gently work on like one crack at a time and see if I can even them out. Aha, I think I am actually at least helping it a little bit. Eh, it's not staying though. It's better than it was. I'm all the way back at the very back. Ah, it's not staying. So something, the grain has gotten jarred there and it's not letting it go back together. Yeah, it's just not going. 
It's almost going, but I'm afraid if I push very hard, I'll crack and break something else. And I'm pushing pretty hard. Ah, so close. It seems like it's further back here is where the worst, worst of it is. And of course, that's the hardest part for me to reach through the sound hole. I'm going to roll my sleeve up to let my arm get in there better. Maybe with my little girl wrist that I have, maybe I can get back in there. Yeah, a little bit. It's just not going to cooperate. And I'm not sure I know any good way to get that to cooperate. You know, if it was just one side, it, it wouldn't be nearly as bad. When both of these and the middle is popped out, it's that's an indication it doesn't want to go back in there because it's obviously... Uh, got the grain orientation where it doesn't want to match up. All right, I'm, I'm doing something different. I'm, I'm poking this one out at the top. I'm, I'm actually taking this center grain, I'm pushing it out, and I'm trying to fold the bottom in and see if that'll work. A little bit of success, but not much. Uh, not really. It's almost, eh, it's not really. It's just not going. It doesn't want to go. It's a sad deal. The only other thing I can think of to try, and I don't know if I can do anything, is if I had some way of getting this to separate and whether I put a jack on the inside and push the sides apart a little bit, but I'm afraid I'll bust something worse. I'm afraid I'll even crack it further down through here if I try that. See if I can separate it this way and get it to go down in there. It feels like it does it while I'm holding the tension on. Actually, this one doesn't feel too bad now. This piece doesn't. This piece is still very off right here. That actually doesn't feel too terrible. I think I could fill that now and make that work. I don't plan to try to glue this until I get it level. And then the glue, I'm just going to use CA glue because it'll sink down in there. And that's the only way to glue something like this, in my opinion. I mean, you could do it with uh, wood glue too. But because of the difficulty of getting it to match up is the reason I don't think that wood glue is the best choice in this case. If I could somehow... Now that I've got that one kind of in there, if I could get this one to go down in there, and it just doesn't seem like it wants to go at all. I mean, seriously, it does not want to go. There could be a couple of issues. It could be that there was tension going this way in the wood already, you know, like it wanted to go that way naturally. And now that this cracked, it just sure doesn't want to go back. That's another possibility. Boy, that is tight. Ah, I felt something give back here, pulling this direction with my fingers. Yeah, that's really tight. It does not want to go. Like I said, this side here is not horrible now. It's not perfect, but it's definitely better than it was. This side, not so much. This side's about like it was. Boy, I wish I could figure out a way to get that down in there. Now that that side's in, I'm going to see if I can hold it there and, and work on the other piece and see if it'll not doing much with that really doesn't want to go well i'm going to have to do some thinking off camera and see if i can come up with a way because i don't want to just glue it back uneven like that it's just not a very good job that way Okay, we have a very non-conventional idea. This side is not going to go down. I've tried everything I can think of off camera to push it down. It won't go down. This side is, I won't say it's perfect, but it's significantly better than when it came in here. I think I could live with this side. This side, not so much. I'm going to lay this piece of rubber on here, which a viewer sent this to me. It's a non-skid type rubber that you lay things on, but it's also got just the right amount of padding, I think, to, to do this. Believe it or not, I'm asking Melissa to actually tap on this, and we've already gone over how hard to hit it. Just kind of about this hard. Not real hard. Just, I just want the shock value to see if it'll jar this grain down while I'm going to be inside the guitar holding this side up. And I'll, I'll kind of point with my uh, left hand where I want you to hit. So about about right in here first. So just tap about right, no, about right where you're, yeah, just kind of tap, not real hard, just firm. There you go, that's good. Try it again, one more time. I think we might have that one. Let's go down just a little further and try it right here. Just not real hard, not quite that hard. All right, back right here. Try it again. Right in here, we've got a problem. We got a brace that goes across this and it won't let it go back together. 
think it's even working up here. It's kind of come back again. It seemed to work for the moment. I can almost hold it together there, but there's a brace that goes across this right here. A big heavy brace, in fact. In fact, that brace is, I would say, as wide as my fingers going right across here. It's glued all the way across this and it won't let it go back down in there. Man, I don't know. I don't think it's working. I'm afraid we're just wasting our time. I'm trying to get my arm back as far as I can. Try to hit it about right here. One more time. One more time. About here. Try it again. All right, stop. Now, it's just not working. I can't get it to go down. I'm holding on this side up to make that side go down, but it just isn't working. I'm gonna have to try something else. All right, my next idea is to put a piece of dowel inside of here and, and put it in in such a way that I can wedge, wedge this apart. I don't know if I can even get the dowel in there, first of all. This is just an attempt, and I seriously don't even know if we can even fit it in there and if we can get it to wedge itself apart at all. It's not gonna be easy. I don't think it's gonna work. All right, so that one's gonna be too long. We'll have to try something else. I'm gonna keep trying a couple of ideas like that and if I get something that works, I'll show you what I did. Well, my friends, I've tried pretty much every trick I've got. I put a, a bar across here and I even took a wedge and made a special wedge that fit just right and pushed it in there to wedge this further apart. No luck, just nothing's really working. So I've got one last option, which I didn't want to use this option, but sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. And what I got to do right now is to take and get in here and actually cut this and make it go back together, whether it wants to or not. It's not the way I want to fix it, but it's the way it's going to have to be fixed because it will not go, I cannot, I, I put so much force spreading it this way, I'm afraid I'm gonna break something. You know, I've hammered on it, I've, I've tapped on it, I've pushed on it, I've pulled on it, and I can't get it to do it. So I have to try something else, and this is my something else. You know, I don't know if this is gonna work either, but it can't be any worse than it is. This is a brand new X-Acto blade, so it's pretty sharp. It's difficult to get it in there. Well, it went in two or three times pretty easy, but I can't get it back in there now. Maybe I've got it fitting closer. It will not go back in there again. There, I got it. So now I just, that's the only thing I know to try is just keep cutting out little pieces of wood. I'm seeing little splinters coming out of there. You know, just gonna have to make it match artificially since we can't get it to line up the way we want it to. It's a very steep angle this way I see I am cutting, I can see I'm cutting, and there's pieces of wood coming out. Little thin slivers, they look big, but they're really thin little slivers. Once I get enough of those out of there, it might go back together that way. Here's another little sliver that I've cut out, a couple of little sliver, slivers. You know, I don't give up easy. There's got to be a way to do it. It's just, you know, I would have preferred it just press back together, then it usually makes a better match that way. When you can't get something to work one way, you just keep trying until you get something to work. I'm really worried that I'll crack it further, so I'm trying not to, to do that. You have to take some risks in order to get any gain on this kind of thing. Hopefully, the, this is where the experience comes in and you can kind of tell how much risk to take. The trick here is trying to keep your angle consistent so that it can has a chance to go back together. There's another sliver I got out of there. You can see these little tiny slivers that I'm getting out of there, very tiny. They're not much. Well, off camera, I spent a lot more time cutting that and working on it, and I have to be honest and tell you that it's not great, but I think it'll work. Um, it, you know, I think we can now maybe disguise it enough to cover it up and buff over it and everything and fill it, you know, that kind of thing. Um, it's not great at all. Uh, boy, I don't know that I've ever run into one that was any tougher to get level than this one. It's pretty tough, but it's it's in the ballpark level. It, it ain't level. It's just kind of tolerable, I think. I think we can make it work. Man, I've tried and tried. There's so many braces through there. You would not believe how many braces are through there on this. 
I would say, let me see if I can t tell you all. Well, actually there aren't very many braces in there, but there's just one really big brace. It's probably that wide and goes across that, and that makes that hard to level out. I wonder if there isn't something under that brace that's keeping it from going down. I actually kind of think that might be part of my problem. I'm actually getting the blade between the brace and that piece that's broke. Maybe I'll slip something out of there that'll help. Can't hurt, I don't think, at this point. It's not working good. I'll try something else that I can slide under there. Maybe a feeler gauge or something, and maybe that'll go in there and knock, knock some of the junk out. I have a feeler gauge that I ground the end off flat. It's only eight thousandths. Maybe I can get that under there and knock some dirt out that's in the way because it's definitely got problems. Yeah, that went through, and maybe that'll push it through enough times. Maybe that will get rid of some dirt or glue or whatever's in there that'll let it maybe meet up a little bit better. Yeah, it's definitely gone through a couple of times and all the way across there. Okay, well, that's about all I can do on that. You know, as I say, it is what it is. I, You know, I didn't break it. I'm just trying to fix it. You know, you got to play the cards you're dealt, and this is what I'm dealt. I think I can make something out of this that'll look halfway decent and will at least be strong. So we're going on to the next step. Okay, Dr. Rose has got on the old blue gloves. I'm inside this guitar with my right hand and I am pushing on these cracks trying to hold them together. Melissa is going to try to apply the CA glue and then we're going to try to spritz it with the hardener. Do not, not try this at home. For sure. It, it can just make such a mess on your finish. Ordinarily that I do all this. glue is just, I mean, thin as oh, water. It's thinner even. Let's just rest that and see where we're at here. Let me just kind of get out here. I don't think we, it did as good as I was hoping, but on the other hand, it's not too terribly bad. At least I didn't glue my hand inside, which I have done before. I'm just going to try applying this again on the outside. It ain't easy to do. We got it pretty full of the glue this time. I'm trying to get it to hold, hand me that. I'm just trying to get it to hold solid. It's not gonna be perfect repair, but I think it'll be sandable and levelable. And I think that's all that we can hope for on this one. I think when we're done, it will barely be noticeable, but right now it's kinda like the ugly duckling thing. This looks good now, it's solid, it ain't moving, that's for sure. So that's pretty solid. Now we gotta work on this other one. The other one's not nearly as difficult, I don't think. Though it's not easy. Yeah, it's still open, for sure. I think I can do it from the outside, though. And it's already setting up, I can tell. Yeah, it just is what it is, you know? That's, that's not too terribly bad, it don't look Real good, I'll be honest, but I think it's fixable. Like I said, I didn't break it, I'm just trying to fix it. Sometimes they cooperate and sometimes they don't. And this one hasn't cooperated one little bit so far. I'm gonna try to fill the crack more with the CA glue because the CA glue fills it much better than finish does. It would take forever to fill this with finish. Yeah, I think we got it. It's pretty full. Might have to put one more application through here. Not sure about this side. It needs more or not. Yeah, it's pretty ugly, guys. As you can see in the camera there, it's, it's not pretty. But as I've said many, many times, they often look much uglier before you get them pretty. They have to... They have to go through a phase. Thank you, Melissa. So we'll we'll move on from there. I just dropped glue down, just let it gravity drop right down on that brace where the brace crosses this break. And that way the glue went underneath the brace and will stop any vibration that could happen there. You know, it ain't pretty, but pretty sure it's solid. I don't think we're gonna have any problem with it. You know, it's, it's solid, it's fixed. Now we just gotta make it look pretty if we can. I've got some 320 and I've got it dry. And 
I'm just going to start by trying to get rid of this horrible ledge that's there, and it is a ledge. And see what we can do about smoothing that out. And there's glue build up and it's piled up a little bit in places. I'll be honest, I was hoping for better. But I, I think by the time we're done, it'll be acceptable. I'm using the 320 dry. I felt like that's a better way to go in this particular situation. Though I may switch to wet later. Well, I'd like to say you can't feel it, but that would be a total lie, because you can. Yeah, even this side's not that great. Boy, it, I don't know that I've ever had one that didn't want to match up any better than that. That thing did not want to go back together at all. Got me a new piece of 320, and I've got li this little sanding rubber call deal, and I'm really trying to put the pressure right on that seam so that we can level it out a little bit better. And essentially, I'm actually sanding the wood, I think, at this point. Although I can still see a lot of finish coming off. But it's getting better. I mean, you can feel it, but it isn't terrible now. I think by the time we get sanded through the, the Martin finish on the high spot and build up the low spot, I think we'll be able to disguise it fairly well. As I've said many times, you always want better than you get when it comes to doing finish work like this, or at least that's my case. I'll just say that's my experience. Yeah, there's a, a pretty good chunk out right in here. You can tell that that's probably where the impact was. It's really not feeling horrible now. It's still not the way I want it, but we're getting close. I think we have a chance. All right, I'm going to take and try to fill in the crack with some more CA glue. Getting this stuff to cooperate, just about the hardest thing you'll ever do in your life. The last thing this stuff likes to do is cooperate. What I do is I let it sit for just a few minutes, or a few seconds, really. If you let it sit just a little while in the air, then it won't it won't turn white when you spritz it. That's been my experience. And it looks like it hardened up. And with the maybe little exception right here, it looks like it's filled the crack this time. Maybe right here a little bit. Now we'll try it on this one. I'm gonna have to tip it a little bit, I think, to get this one to fill. Does not like to cooperate at all. Again, let it set just in the air for, oh, eight or 10 seconds. And then when you spritz it, it generally won't turn white. And yet it dries pretty fast that way. We're in the ballpark now, guys. That's not horrible now. You know, we, we'll get it there. We're going to make this thing look halfway decent before we're done. I'm going to give that a little more time to dry and get hard before I sand on it. While I'm letting the glue dry on those cracks on the back, I mean, it's already dry, but I'm just letting it get hard, letting it uh, cure, if you will. People get on me if I don't use the proper word, like this is an English class. But anyway, the glue is hardening and curing, and uh, while it's doing that, I'm going to work on this. And I do that to soften it a little bit, soften the glue, and then it should peel off without tearing off your wood. And it came off real clean. This pick guard shrinking caused this to crack here and it to crack right there. You know, it came off clean on the part I did, but where it had already shrunk, it broke it here and it broke it there. That's how powerful whatever causes that to shrink is. Now, I've seen many, many old guitars like this where they haven't shrunk at all. So not all plastic shrinks. You know, I've seen the same vintage where they haven't shrunk. So once again, I say it's a chemical reaction that caused that to shrink. And you can also tell it's hard in that area where it's shrunk. It's just brittle and hard. The rest of it's not that bad. That's my belief and I'm sticking to it. Now this is cracked and, and it's opened up. So once again, we're gonna have to go to the CA glue. Once again, I'm donning the glove because I'm gonna have to poke on this. I don't know if you, in the video if this will show up very well, but perhaps you can see the little crack that's there 
it's opened up right in there. I think maybe you can see it there. And so that's what I'm gluing. Sorry, I have to turn it this way so I can see it. And I get the glue in the crack and then I will hold it shut and hold it shut for a little while there. And that looks like that did it. I don't see a crack there at all now. In fact, you'd have to have real good eyes to see the little tiny, tiny little tiny line that's there. Because I can see a tiny line, I'm gonna to touch the glue on it again just to see if there's an open spot there, but I don't think there is. I think we're good, okay? And then I think we've got a spot down on this side. Again, I don't know that it'll show up, but it's right in here that I think we have a crack as well. Yeah, we do. Actually, it's a bigger crack now that I see it from this side. And it even goes out into the finish a little bit, which I don't like to see. But we've got to deal with what we have to deal with. Going out into the finish there to glue the finish back down because the finish, yeah, I can even see it moving in the finish. And I'm going to hold it down tight, as tight as I can. Spritz it. I do think we fixed that area fine. I don't think there's any more problem in this area. Now, I do have a new pick guard. I'm not sure it's the right one for this. It seems like it's a little bit bigger. That's kind of good because it covers up the problems. There's a, a ridge right around this where the finish built up to the pick guard there. So if you put this on here, it's gonna suck down in there. It's just not that great of an idea here. So I don't know how I'm gonna work on this yet. Pick guard doesn't match exactly, but it's not too terribly bad either. I might just cut it down to make it match. That's tough to do. This corner right here is not as round. I don't know if I could use the old one for a pattern. It just needs a little off of this corner to make it fit in there better. So I think I'm just gonna do it by eye and just take my time with it. I got the back end of this fitting up well, but I couldn't get this point to fit up and this is much bigger. So I decided to go ahead and just make me a paper template and I was able to trace around the edge here and I think I've got the paper template fitting really well. So I think I'm just gonna stick it on here. I think I'm just gonna glue it on with a glue stick and then I'm just gonna go around it with a sander and sand it off until I get it where I want it. That's about all I can do, I think. So hopefully a glue stick will stick this on here. Now this has got this peel off plastic on the top. So the glue stick, sh you know, it won't hurt the actual pick guard because of the, of the uh, peel off plastic. So let's see if we can make this happen. I'm hoping the glue stick will even stick to that plastic. It may not. Well, unfortunately it might be sticking too good. Can't win for losing sometimes. Oh, gun it anyway. That might work. It's not as nice as I was wanting it, but I, I think it's okay. As long as I can shape it to that, I think we're good. And I think I can shape it to that. You can see there the black that has to come off in order to make it fit, and a little bit around here too. I'm just going to take it over to the spindle sander. I'm not going to film that and cut it down. That's all I'm doing. Well, I was able to shape it down on the, on the spindle sander, no problem. Of course, you know, there's a stick on plastic on the back and then there's a little thin film of plastic on the top and you know all that kind of gets in your way because that doesn't grind off that just folds up. I'm cutting a little bevel around the outer edge of this because when you sand it with the spindle sander you just basically are cutting everything off blunt and square. So I'm rounding off that squareness and that bluntness and when I do that, that cuts off that plastic that was on the top as well. I'm not worried about the one on the bottom because that'll peel off. And I'm hoping I get got it to the right shape here. I'm gonna set it on here just temporarily to see if it looks pretty good. And it, it ought to because I'm pretty sure I got it just right to the size. I think it's gonna look all right. It's pretty hard to tell though, to be truthful. Um. I'm gonna peel off the glue stick paper on the top. Hopefully that'll come off. Actually, that, that's not even pulling off the plastic, so that's kind of a good thing. That worked out pretty well. Gives me a better look at it, a better view of it. Boy, it's really hard to tell. That paper on the back is much bigger. I don't know if I should just go for it or what. 
feel like I'm pretty close, but I don't know that I'm perfect. This whole area is kind of sunk a little bit too, which doesn't make it any easier. <sighs> no time like the present. Just laying it on there lightly first. It looks like it's going to cover, so I don't know if it's good as I wanted or not, to be honest. I, it's it's kind of dished a little. I wish wished it didn't do that, but I don't know what else we can do about that. The whole thing was dished in there. And now we'll see if we can peel off the, the outer film of plastic. There, it's peeling off finally. And of course, I could have left that on there until the very end, but I kind of wanted to see how it was going to look. Shiny, shiny pick guard, they don't do much for me. I don't think you will like it either. So to me, if it gets a little scuffed up, a little scratched up, I think they look better. I don't think they look great when they're real, that bright and shiny. But it looks pretty good. So, certainly better than that shrunk up piece of junk that was on there. At least it's there. It's not like a permanent thing. You can always peel them off and put another one on if it doesn't satisfy. That's what I had in stock and that's what I made fit and uh, it seems to be okay. Now we're ready to sand on this. This has had enough time to cure I believe. I do see a low spot or two. It'll probably have to be filled again in a place or two. Yeah even this CA glue doesn't fill without shrinking a little bit and it's it's definitely shrunk again but it fills much faster than the lacquer would. Once I get it filled satisfactory, then we'll sand the whole area and we'll refinish this whole area and buff it out and I think it'll look fine. Yeah, sanding, those little sanding blocks, they fill up so fast, I can do it much faster with my fingers and move around and keep the sandpaper moving and I just gain a lot of time by using my finger. And we'll probably have to fill it again, but we're getting there. Now you can barely feel it. Right here it's built up pretty heavily, so I'm gonna use a scraper and scrape off the top of the glue. Once I get most of the thickness off, then I'll go back to the sandpaper. I think I can go back to the sandpaper now, except that I'm gonna need another piece of sandpaper already. That one's pretty much full. Hopefully you can see that now it's almost blending in in places. Um, it's not yet, but it's getting close. I think we're gonna actually have a repair here that you'll barely be able to see when we're done. Well, that's after about one more hour of work, sanding and stuff. Yeah, you can still see it a little bit, but it's getting pretty good. I think we just need to apply the CA glue one more time and then I kind of think we're there. Quite a hole here. I, actually, I hadn't seen this before. There's a crack right around here. I didn't even see that before. That's not going back together either. I wish I had seen that ahead of time, but it's a pretty good crack around there. I, I hadn't even noticed it before. We'll just have to fill it with CA glue, and then that way, if there's anything on, loose on the inside, it'll seal it up. That looks like that might have filled at that time. We got a little more fill to do on this one too. I'm gonna let that set and cure for an hour or so and get hard again and then sand that out. And then I think we're ready to just roughly sand the whole area and put some finish over it and call her finished. No pun intended. It's the next morning. Before I quit last night, I put one more coat of CA glue on this. Yes, you can still see where the cracks were, but now, and, and I'm not gonna lie and say you can't feel it, but it's barely feelable. It's not gonna be perfect, but it's not too bad. Um, I've sanded it down to 320. So now I'm going to 400. I'm gonna go over it lightly with 400, and then we're just gonna go up to about 1200, and then we'll put a coat of lacquer over this and see what it looks like. The CA glue is very noticeable right now in the two big white stripes that are there, but after we get the lacquer over it, I don't think we'll be able to hardly tell it. I've sanded this down to about 1200. It feels real nice and smooth. And I think I'm ready to go ahead and put some finish on this. And I don't know exactly how I'm gonna do that because you can't, if you try to tape this off, 
it will just show a line. You can't tape this off. So I'm just going to have to maybe put tape around here to keep the overspray off the sides, but just spray it through here and let the overspray come out on this and then it just has to be blended back together. That's the only thing I know to do. It's the way I've done it in the past and that's where I'm going to go with it. So here we go. As you may be able to see, I have it taped off and I'm just going to spray it across this area here and uh, it will be what it is. That's all I can tell you. You just do your best. So here we go. The old D35 got about four or five coats of lacquer on here. And you know, it just, every time you put lacquer on it, it emphasizes any flaws. It just emphasizes them. You can't hide them. It makes them stand out 10 times worse. But once you sand it level and put more coats on, it eventually helps go away. But anyway, I've got uh, 400 wet or dry. Um, this has been soaking in soapy water for about, oh, 10 minutes. And that softens the paper up good. And I'm just going to go over this. It would be nice to give this extra time to dry before I do this, but you know, this is a production shop. I've got lots of instruments sitting around, and so you just kind of have to keep them on moving through. Lots more to get to, so I try to get them through as quick as I can. I will let the final coats dry longer, but this inter these intermediate coats, I have found it doesn't need to wait all that long before you can recoat it. You know, the quicker you can get it recoated, the better it starts to look. You know, like sanding it like this now, Already, I can't even tell where the brakes are like this. It looks great this way. If it would just continue to be camouflaged like that, it would be awesome, but it doesn't. I don't feel them too much that way. Let's wipe it off and just get an idea of what it's looking like. Well, it looks pretty good right there. It doesn't look too terribly bad. Sure looks better than it did a minute ago. It's getting better. You can still see it in places and it really is just like doing drywall mud. You just kind of have to feather it out and make it just kind of blend in. It's very, very similar to doing that if you've ever done any mudding on drywall. In fact, it's basically the same thing. You know, that looks pretty good. And the, the object is knowing when to quit. That's, that really is the, what you learn on doing this is knowing when to quit. There is a point of diminishing return, so you want to work right up to that point and know when to quit. And I think on this go around, that's where I'm at. So I'm gonna buff this off real good with a dry paper towel and give it about, oh, you know, 30 minutes to dry a little bit more in the air. And then we're gonna put some more coats on this. It's been about 24 hours since the last coats of lacquer went on this. It's looking pretty good. I'm gonna to try to speed things up here and just try to sand it and buff it out and move on, get this thing out of the, out of the shop. It's looking pretty fine, a little better than I thought it would probably look, but you know, then again, having said that, it never looks as good as I really want it to look, but, but it ain't bad. This is all 400 and I'm sanding the whole area with 400 to get rid of the overspray. This was taped off, but that corner right where the tape was gets a little rough because of the overspray and stuff. So just trying to get rid of that. I think we're probably in pretty good shape. Let's wipe it down and see what it looks like. Well, I can see where the overspray kind of is still, so I guess I'm going to work on it some more. I think I can get by with skipping several grades and going to 1200. I don't think that'll be a problem. The 1200, I'll probably go over the whole instrument on the back anyway to try to blend it all together. Really not looking too bad at this point. I think you can, you know, this is where it was broke and it's really not terrible. You can see it. I'm not going to tell you you can't see it, but it's 
you got to be, you got to kind of know what's there to, to really know what's there at this point. You, you really wouldn't notice it too much, I don't think, if, if you didn't know it was already broke. I think the 1200 does a good job. I can tell the difference in the areas I've sprayed and the original. There's no question I can see some difference. But I think once I buff it out with the semi-chrome, I think it'll probably be okay. It's really not too bad. It's, it looks like it's going to come around. I might just take this over to the big buffing wheel and see what that does to it. Sometimes that works great, sometimes not so good. But I'm going to give it a shot over there because it'll just save some time if it works. Overall, it's turning out pretty darn nice. You, if you look, you can see the kind of a ripple there, and that's because it just never did match up smooth. You know, for a little ripple compared to two big cracks, that's not too bad. And the rest of it looks gorgeous. It's buffed out really shiny, as you can see. It just, you know, looks really nice. I think it looks much better than the mat myself. Uh, anyway, I'm going to now use the Renaissance Wax. Now the Renaissance Wax uh, just hardens that outer finish and uh, in my opinion just makes the guitar pop just that much better. Got more wax on this little cloth than I needed. Just going to go ahead and spread it around and make use of it. Again, I don't, I try to avoid getting it on the pick guard. I don't think the Renaissance wax is as bad as some of the other things. You know, I still try to keep it off the pick guard as well. And I do like to buff it in. It's just another level of buffing. So I rub it in pretty good. Now it's gonna be fun getting it off of there because I got quite a bit on there and I put it on a bigger area than I normally do. But this stuff is a little more forgiving than other paste waxes. If you're using a different paste wax, I wouldn't recommend putting it over the whole front top at once. I would just say a small section at a time. Even this is difficult to get off and it's easier than most paste waxes. There's kind of a scuffed area right there. I may have to work on that individually. Again, keep the rag turning constantly. You can't buff this stuff out and keep the rag in the same position. You have to keep the rag moving and try to unfold it and get fresh areas all the time. And some people would prefer to use a, a different kind of cloth, but I actually find these blue shop towels, these soft ones, that I just find that they work great for stuff like this. They seem to even add a little extra polish. Yeah, it's really hard to get it off back here in this area. I didn't get to it quick enough and it's drying on me. It's really hard to get it off once it dries. You have to use a lot more elbow grease once it dries. So my suggestion is don't put it on very big area and buff it off fairly quickly. Take a new fresh one and finish the buffing. You have to look at it in a bunch of different directions, a bunch of different lights to get it all off. You think it's off, but you look at it in a different direction and you'll see some more there. Well, that looks pretty darn fine to me. <laughs> it just, I hope it's showing up in the camera because boy, that's looking gorgeous if you ask me. This area right here for some reason is kind of messed up and I'm gonna see if we can fix that. I'll start that with the uh, semi-chrome, see if we can buff that out right there. Got the front looking pretty good, so I moved on to the back, and I'm putting the Renaissance wax on the back. I've got enough on here this time to just do about half of the back, and then I'll do the other half in a minute. You just really want to rub it in, though. That's the thing. You, uh, just applying it don't do it. You got to buff it in to really get the best result. And let's see what it looks like. That looks pretty good. I'm going to put it on the upper half now. Well, I won't try to fool anybody. You can see it, but on the other hand, it's pretty darn fine compared to the way we were looking at it before. I'm pretty happy with it. I feel like the customer will be happy with that too. If I'm happy, they ought to be happy, I think, in my opinion, because I'm kind of hard to please. It looks real nice. There's a little spot right in here and a little spot right in here, and I don't know what that is. It's just the finish is kind of messed up there. I don't know what caused that exactly, but otherwise it's pretty fine. My guess is it's just some kind of pick flipping around here and here too. You can see a little bit more back in here, but it's not too bad. 
It's not terrible, just a little bit of show. Otherwise, it almost looks like it's brand new. Well, now that we've got this guitar up in decent shape with the pick guard and the finish and the crack and all that good stuff, we're going to just put the strings on it, but in order to do that, we need to probably do a little light setup. Uh, there's some fret wear in here, but not very bad. So we're just going to do a light dressing. And as I've said before, I pretty much can tell just the first rub down here whether or not there's problems. There's a little bit of highness right in here and right in here and right in here. So. Anyway, we'll just level it all off and recrown it and it'll be ready to go. That feels pretty nice. I, I can tell by looking at each of the frets that they've all been leveled. They look good. These last two are not leveled, but that's okay. There's always a fall away up here and that's fine. The rest of them have all been hit. Right here, this one right here, right in the, on just on this end has not been hit. I doubt it'll come into play, but we'll hit it a little bit. And even filing these frets is a lot like mudding drywall. You have to fan it out. If you just keep filing in one spot till you get down there, then, then you've got a mess. So you have to fan it out. As long as you fan it out, then you're talking a couple of thousandths of an inch is the worst variance you've got. And a thousandth or two won't hurt you too bad, though in some cases that can make the difference. I think we're in good shape. I'm going to go ahead and recrown that. And uh, I'm going to try to avoid messing with the fretboard because the fretboard otherwise is in pretty darn good shape. Got the medium fret crown here, and these are kind of medium to small frets, so this should work. I've got the sticky back 600 sandpaper. I like that because it sticks to my fingers like that, and uh, it just makes this process real simple. Um, you know, often I just go this way, but on this fretboard, it's so perfect. There's really no reason to mess it up. And I'm just going to use the 600 this on this, this way. Most people think that's the better way to do it anyway, although I don't see much difference. I do, you know, obviously know that your lines are going in opposite directions, certainly, but this sandpaper is so fine that you can't really see any lines or feel any lines when you're done, regardless which way you go. You can use tape or other things to do this. These post-it notes seem to work really good for me and they're just fast. And I like fast and easy. That's my thing about all everything I do. If it's fast and easy, that's what I usually try to do. All this complicated stuff is for the birds. It doesn't take much sanding to get them smooth. The file leaves them a little rough, so you do need to sand them, I think. You could probably get by with just the file if you really put light pressure on your file. I think the sanding is a much better deal. The uh, post-it notes get a little less sticky by the time you get all the way to the end, but they still generally hold up well enough to do a whole fretboard. I think that looks fine. Well, look at there, there's some binding that's loose. I didn't even notice that. We'll glue that up too while we're at it. It was already loose, I think, and I just grabbed it there and the cloth caught on it and pulled it off. But better now than later, we can fix that and you'll never know it. Looking at it closer, it's loose on this side too. I can move it with my thumbnail. At least it's loose up to the first fret or so. No time like the present. We'll use my Formula 560 canopy glue, which I just buy off of eBay, I believe. It works really good for plastic to wood. In fact, it's the best for this type of work that I found, really. It doesn't melt the plastic like the old glues do, but a lot of this new plastic is different anyway, and it doesn't melt like that other stuff used to melt anyway. So, having said all that, this stuff works great. And it's clean up with water, which is awesome too. And speaking of that, I'm going to go get some water so I can clean that up.
And we're gonna have to get a rubber band or something around this, but uh, before I do that, I'm gonna glue this side too because it's definitely loose as well. This new kind of plastic, it just doesn't glue up as well. Making sure I got it down in there good, and I do. And now I'll go get that uh, rubber band deal and we'll let this set for a couple hours before we string it up. And we'll just let it set like that for a couple hours and it'll be ready to go. The last thing I'm gonna do before I string this baby up is just put a little bit of linseed oil. This is boiled linseed oil, people ask all the time. I've never ever used raw linseed oil, so it's always boiled when I use it. And we'll put a little bit on the bridge back here too. Only problem is you get it on the rest of the guitar. Now that I did that, I see that the saddle is micarta, and we've gone to this much trouble on this baby, we might as well make it a deer antler saddle to boot, and uh, I believe that'll just give it that much better sound. I'll just dry off anything around here that might have got that uh, linseed oil on it. And it won't take very long to make a deer antler saddle, so we'll just do that. After making the deer antler saddle, I have brought the strings up, and by the way, these are medium strings. I brought them up to uh, approximate tension, and when I say approximate, I mean they're in the ballpark. I didn't make it go to perfect tuning because I just want to check tension here and see what kind of action we, we're, we're getting. And it looks a little high. And we're at 100 and 100, 120, 125 thousandths, I'm gonna say 120 thousandths. We'll call it 120 thousandths on that side. Not too bad on the, on the treble. I'm gonna call it 100 on the treble. 120 roughly down, uh, so if we take 120, we wanna go down to 90, that's 30 thousandths. So 60 thousandths down to 20 thousandths on this side. 60 to 20, because we just wanna drop this one 10. 60 to 20. That's what we got to do. Once again, the way I do that is I just make a black mark down there and I mark 60 thousandths through that black mark so I can see it. And then I drop down to 20 thousandths on the treble side. And that's not much, I can tell you. And then we'll make a mark through the black on that one. A lot harder to mark that one because it's so close. Maybe you can see the little white mark right there in the black. And then the, the same thing on this side. My friends, it's been 24 hours. The guitar has been sitting and drying for since yesterday. Yeah, you can still see the little wrinkles there, but overall the finish itself is fine. If you look at it, you can, you know, when you don't get it in the, that light, it looks almost perfect. You can't hardly tell it at all, except for when you get it in the right light, you can still see the wrinkles. You know, it is what it is because uh, that just would not match up. I couldn't get it to go down for nothing. I tried everything I could think of and then some things. But it does have a nice sound. I, I won't lie to you, the intonation's a little bit tough on this thing. Um, I'm sure this is one of those Martins that the bridge and saddle's in the wrong place. Whenever I put the capo on it, it got sharp by quite a bit. Just to show you what I'm talking about on the intonation, here's the tuner. Hopefully you can see it there. We'll Get the note. That's pretty close. And then noting it, even noting it lightly. It jumps a little bit on that one. Not too bad. You can see it's like 10 to 15 cents on that one. cents, nine cents, about ten cents. 
You know, I don't think there's really a good way to compensate the saddle on this. Um, I mean, we could make a thick, a bigger saddle slot. That would probably be the easiest way is to make the saddle slot bigger on the back side, then put a wider saddle in it, and then compensate the front of the saddle off, and that would move the strings back a little bit. And that would probably be enough to handle this one. That would be one way to do this one. But I'll mention it to the customer. I mean, he's been living with it this long. See, that one's 10 cents sharp, too. I thought it was. It just didn't show it a minute ago. But anyway, uh, he's been living with it that way since it was new, I'm sure. So uh, I didn't change anything on that aspect. Well, friends, you know me. I couldn't live with that intonation problem. So it's still there, I'll be honest. But at least I improved it a little bit. I took the saddle back out, did the exact opposite of what you normally do. You know, you see that oftentimes the B is compensated back. Basically, I compensated the whole saddle back, which is kind of weird, but that's what I did. And it helped it a few cents per string, but it's still not, it's not perfect, but it's improved. So it's a little better. And by the way, I didn't charge the customer for that. It only took me five minutes, but at least it improved it a little bit. I just retuned it with the capo one. I'm going to play with the C position and I'm going to be in the key of D. This is a song that I wrote about 20 years ago. And I promise you, you could count on one hand and still have fingers left on the number of times that I've ever played and sang this song that I wrote. I know some of you won't care for it because it's kind of a love gone wrong song, but uh, there you go. It's called This Time I Fail. My heart is broken while yours be strong. You say you're right, but I think you're wrong. song but at least YouTube won't steal the money from it. <laughs> Friends sometimes it just doesn't seem like it ever quits you know. Started to put the guitar away in the case and I found a problem with his case. I hadn't opened this compartment it was just sitting like this but when I opened it it's not attached 
and there's some staples in there, and I guess they were stapled into this, but those staples are really flimsy. There's no way to drive them back in. Uh, if I tried to drive them, they would just bend. So I think I'm gonna pull all those staples. Matter of fact, they're little tiny things you can see there. I think I'll pull all those. Um, I think I'll put some glue on this and I'll put some sort of a little tack or something in there, some little nails of some sort and try to hold it back in place. Hopefully these staples will come out. Um, actually, it looks like some are through both parts and some are not. Uh, there's two layers here. Uh, if I can get the ones out of the double layer, at least. I'll cut the other ones off if I have to. I don't know. Be nice to just have the case working properly. Well, I'll clean this up and show you what I'm gonna do. Well, I decided to go ahead and just take the double layer apart. It goes like this. So I'm gonna open it up. I'm gonna spray the contact cement on there. That You can tell that's what they had on there before. I'm gonna cover this part with newspaper so I don't get the contact cement on that. And the contact cement I'm using is this 3M 90 high strength. They don't give this stuff away, by the way. It's pretty expensive when you go buy it. Put a good coat on there. You have to really let it set till it dries. I'm gonna move it out of the spray area there and I'll show you how I stick that together once it's dried up. The directions on this adhesive say to give it one to 10 minutes. It's probably been about four minutes and we're just gonna go ahead and stick it together. I'm just trying to line it up. You only get one shot at lining this up and that should have it stuck. Now, they also use some sort of adhesive on this into the case. Now that's much more difficult because, you know, the overspray, I'll have to be very careful if I use this. I'm gonna look at it and see what I can do with that. Don't have the best camera set up for this. It's just an awkward angle. I'm gonna use the canopy glue rather than the spray on stuff because I just see it envisioning a mess. And I think the canopy glue will hold this, but I'm not really 100% sure. But really, I'm hoping to put the nails in it and I think the nails will actually do more than anything else. I just wanna get the lid seated where it's supposed to first and then open it up on that hinge and press this back like it goes and hopefully hold it there and get the little nails. Got just little nails with small heads. That's what I'm trying to use. I think it'll work, but I don't know for sure. Seems like it went into something solid and these nails are much longer than the staples were, so hopefully they'll work. I'll put maybe six nails in it on the top on each side and then one, you know, three in the bottom, uh, all across the bottom there. Three in the top, three in the bottom. Certainly better than it was, I can already tell that. A little difficult to get in there and hold it and nail it and all that at the same time. So maybe I can hold it with a pliers down low. Okay, so there's six, six little nails in there holding that now. I'd say it's as good as it was when it came from the factory. Maybe even better, you just don't know. It's probably as good as it was at least because those little tiny staples they had in there were just junk. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this repair. If you did, I would sure appreciate a thumbs up.